Hello, this is Amaka again from Mind of Marcos, which is really a mental health education platform um, that is targeted at you, targeted at me if I wasn't a doctor. <laughs> so I share videos that are useful and videos that help you to think a little bit differently about mental health and the things it takes for you to maintain a good mental space. Because when we feel well in our minds, we end up doing better. We end up being more positive contributors to our lives, our future, our community around ourselves, and maybe to the world at large. Because every single day matters. Every single action matters. And it does matter how you do things. So today, I wanted us to talk about um, what it takes to prepare for going into a psychiatric consultation or for a psychiatric inpatient admission. So there are many ways that you can get into um, psychiatric services. Um, it's not as scary as people think it is. Um, I think I take it for granted because I come to work looking to do my best work every day. So I don't expect people to be scared. I think that was one of the um, surprising things. People are actually scared about coming in to see people like me. And I'm just me. There's no fire on my head. <laughs> I don't put on a scream mask when I'm at work. This is me at work. Um, we're all people that come in every day to make sure that you have a good experience, that when you're leaving us, you have a better quality of life. You're able to live to fulfill your dreams and you're on a better path to your recovery. And so when you are given an appointment, you can be given an appointment in so many different ways. Um, that can be through your GP, can be through your community nurse, can be through maybe another specialty where you're being taken care of and um, they realize you might need some support. It can even be through your family. Um, so if you do come into our services as a um, referral to an outpatient clinic, some of the things you might want to think about is where are you going? Who are you seeing? That's usually found on your letter. Um, the outpatient clinic departments are usually quite good with describing things. But if you're in a country where you can self-refer and literally walk into any hospital, it will be usually um, useful to ask somebody where the psychiatric clinics are. And when you get there, um, ask, talk to a qualified nurse or talk to somebody who works in that department to give you further directions as to where you should be, how to get your name on the register and things like that. But for the benefit of those who are in the Western world, um, you usually get a letter in the post saying that um, you should come to site ABC, you're seeing Dr. ABC, and um, somebody will meet you in the, in the reception. So when you get to reception, or before you get to reception, some people like to do a dry run just so that they know where they are going. And I've done this in the past, not for hospital visits, but maybe like when I have exams or something important, because it does create some anxiety when you don't know where you're going and how long it will take you to get there. So if you need to do a dry run, please do that. Um, take a taxi, get on the bus, take a walk, go to the place, see how long it will take you so that on the day you're well prepared. Get there well before your appointment time. I'll say give 15 minutes just in case you get missing, you miss the wrong entrance and things like that dress comfortably you don't need to put on anything special to come to hospital dress comfortably keep yourself time and if you need to uh, make provisions for things like child care transportation um, things like getting somebody to come with you make provisions for that um, it's also really useful to read about who you're going to meet so if you're going to meet dr. a google dr. a find out what they do find out what their specialty is find out what their special interest is and come up with some questions you want to ask them about your particular um, challenges and how they can help you it is not rude we expect you to ask questions we just expect you to be res respectful about them and not be rude yeah um, come up with questions that you can ask your clinician or whoever that you're seeing Another thing that might be helpful is maybe going with a relative or a trusted friend, somebody who um, you don't feel afraid to um, have with you. If you're in a situation where you're being abused and maybe that's something that is affecting your mental health, I would advise do not disclose that you're going for an appointment to somebody who is abusive towards you. Keep that to yourself. Only disclose to trusted people. 
if you have somebody there with you it means that while you're waiting for your appointment you have somebody to chat with it reduces your anxiety it means that when you're going there you have someone to walk with it calms you down and if there's something you're not sure about uh, maybe your trusted person can bring up questions that are relevant to your care yeah some people will benefit from um, googling you know the hospital policies um, just to see if some things that they want to do are acceptable um, some people like to record their consultations some people like to make a video recording take pictures of their letters take pictures of their notes and things like that or you want copies of your notes that kind of thing think about it see if that's something that's acceptable you can call the hospital in advance and ask them questions as well before your appointment um, so when you do go in for an outpatient appointment you have your questions you're comfortably dressed and you're happy what it looks like really is basically a get to know you thing you know you've asked a lot of questions some of them may seem intrusive some of them may seem like oh why are you asking me this it happened so long ago but it's a get to know you session so just think about it like that this person is a stranger you're meeting them for the first time you're asking them for help you're just getting to know you so be nice answer questions and answer in as much detail as you can because hopefully you're going to build up a relationship with this person so um, they will get more information later everything doesn't have to come up on that first day and if you think you're not ready to answer any of the questions you're asked you can just say i don't think i want to answer that right now and move on okay if they do insist that you should answer the question then you can ask them what the relevance is and as i said be polite be respectful this is just somebody like you you know here to help um it's not you know a court or anything like that nobody's judging you yeah and in your case if you're going in for an admission another thing you might want to consider in addition to what i've just said is to pack a bag pack a bag of things that you're comfortable with don't forget your phone charger, nice, comfortable, floppy slippers, um, a bathrobe, your towels, things that make you comfortable and cozy, things that will keep you um, feeling like your home because an admission is quite a um, scary thing. So whatever keeps you comfortable, if you need a kind of earphone so that you can listen to your music or listen to some calming sounds or podcasts, get them, prepare for your admission. If you need to get, you know, maybe... Um, your duvet make sure your duvet is clean when you're taking it in there are facilities for you to wash and keep your clothes clean but i would say don't overpack because hopefully you got you're going to have um, family and friends coming in and out you can ask whoever you're being admitted under to give you more information about how long the admission will take that's a way to prepare too for an admission how long is this admission going to take what's the goal for this admission how will i know if i'm getting better how um is this admission going to contribute to my quality of life um, what's going to happen during this admission am i just going to be assessed am i going to be treated and um, is there any further plans after that what kind of medication will i be taking what are the side effects of my medication um, what is the name of my medication you may not remember but i would advise you to write them down write them down it's just um gets my goat i'll say and maybe unfair to people when they don't know the medication they're taking somebody just scribbled something down and they can't remember what it is and they're just taking the medication because then you can't find out more information about what you're taking ask ask for the person to spell it out ask them to write it down if you have to if you can't write ask about side effects ask about um, how long it takes for you to work um, ask about prognosis you know ask questions you know you can find a lot of information online about things and um, it does not replace the expertise of your clinician but it helps you to have a good idea of what you're getting into everything cannot be said in a consultation it's really helpful when a patient asks questions that are relevant to them because you know yourself better than i do i'm meeting you for the first time or even the tenth time i still don't know everything about you so if you do have questions that are helpful um, for you, it also helps me to know you better, know what's important to you and the kind of things that um, Will help you get better So thinking about things that will help you get better if you have hobbies If you have anything that you used to do before you got on well and you used to enjoy doing 
I would advise you to think about re-engaging with them, taking them along. If you used to play cards, yeah, put a deck of cards in your box. Um, if you're someone that used to need, yeah, if it's allowed in the hospital, take that along. Uh, if you used to watch football, let them know that you like to watch football and, you know, they can make an event for you to watch football in hospital. So those kind of things help you to have some semblance of your life before you got into hospital. And the aim really is for you to get into a routine that is healthy for you, for your behavior towards your mental health to be supported so that it is more positive and you're working towards um, recovery. And you have um, lots of specialists and clinicians and experts around to support that. And once you get to a place where you're stable, where you have um, good habits that will help you build up a good mental health, be good for discharge. And this usually takes maybe four weeks in some people, eight weeks in some people, longer in some people, shorter in some people, different for everybody. But that's a conversation you can have with your clinician. As much as possible, if you have any habits that you've been using to cope, such as drugs, alcohol, um, you know, negative habits like gambling, <laughs> don't bring them into hospital. People don't, um, I don't think any hospital will accept those kind of behaviors. I know that the temptation is high um, because there are so many vulnerable people around you and some people think that they can make a quick buck by selling drugs. But the penalty is also very high if you do things like that within hospital. So desist from doing things like that. You know, positive coping strategies are very welcome. You know, if you're someone that sings, you play the piano, we're always happy to entertain that. And um, yeah, read up on hospital policies about visiting. Encourage your, you know, trusted friends and family, close people that have a positive impact on your life to visit you. Not too many at once because that can be overwhelming for even you. Um, Keep your visits short, keep them nice. You can plan activities around your visit, such as going for a walk on the hospital grounds, such as playing cards, such as doing an activity when they come. If you have kids, most hospitals have kids visiting rooms where it's safe for kids to kind of come into, ask. And yeah, um, it's, we're always happy to have um, patients, family and friends visit. Um, as long as they don't have a negative impact on your treatment or yourself. Take your medication. I know that that's another thing that um, people wonder about. You know, psychiatric medication has so many side effects. But paracetamol has side effects. Alcohol has side effects. Cigarettes have side effects. If it helps you, then please take it. If you're not seeing any effects, and those are things that um, you've discussed with your clinician and it's not helping, maybe ask them to get a second opinion or try something else, yeah? Don't just stop your medication without advice because stopping as well can have such, such, such impactful, negatively impactful side effects and you don't want that. Any questions about preparing for hospital visits, I'm happy to answer. Put them in the comments and um, you can send an email, yeah? Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Take care of yourself. Be good. Be kind to yourself, especially, and to others. Bye.